Hello again. Uh, this is the uh, third lesson lecture for today. Um, on, in this lecture, I will touch on media ethics, the digital divide, and the newsroom. And we're going to look at how the the um, effects of the new media um, that has developed recently have new changes that are coming on that are coming up in terms of new media and journalism are affecting um, how the newsroom is um, how it's affecting media ethics um, uh, through traditional media ethics to traditional journalism and also online journalism. Um, so we'll look at that and then we'll also look at how this, this ethics and how this role of uh, uh, this uh, convergence of media uh, versus all traditional um, uh, journalism is also affecting um, um, the um, uh, roles within the newsroom and how the structure of the newsroom is changing today. Okay. In the previous century, journalists were clearly defined group um, for the most part, they were professionals and who wrote for major mainstream newspapers and broadcasters. The public had no uh, great dif difficulties in identifying members of the press. But today, citizens without journalistic training and who do not work for mainstream media call themselves journalists or write in ways that fall um, under the general description of, the, uh, of a journalist as someone who regularly, let's say, writes on public issues and um, uh, for a public or audience. And um, it's not always clear whether the term journalism, uh, where the term journalism begins and ends. A lot of people have had um, arguments over who is a journalist. If you write for media, are you a journalist? If you write for online media, are you a journalist? If you are write for a a, a blog, are you a journalist? If you're only a general, if you're a general public who contribute to matters of uh, public interest and acts like a journalist, um, um, or do uh, some parts of what the journalist or some duties of what journalist journalism do, are you a journalist? The, those are most of the questions that are going on today because of this new digital divide. If someone um, does what appears to be a journalist but refuses to be labeled a journalist or he is he she a journalist, for example, comedian uh, John Stewart refers to himself as a um, refuses to call himself a journalist, but magazines refers to him as an influential journalist or um, or refers to him as someone who does engage in journalism. Um, is Stewart a journalist if he does that, that if if he if he does um, uh, performs those duties that are re almost relatable to John to 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 journalism. Is the person expressing their opinions on Facebook, Twitter, in, in, on or Instagram sites a journalist? Okay. An article by the Center for Journalism Ethics argues that lack of uh, clarity about who is a journalist leads to a disagreement with who does journalism. It says, as many people argue that the question of what is journalism or is he or she doing journalism is more significant than the question of who call themselves a journalist. At least three approaches to these questions are possible. Um, they can be defined through three areas. Those are um, spectacle, um, empirical, and normative. Um, through, in, uh, um, uh, through the spectacle approach, one dismisses the question itself as unimportant, whether you're a journalist or not. People don't really care. For example, one might say that anyone can be a journalist. It is not worth arguing over who gets to call themselves a journalist, who is a, spect um, a spectacle about um, attempts to define uh, journalism. And then we've got the empirical approach. There is a more systematic um, and careful approach to the question. We can look at clear examples of journalism or um, of journalism over history and not the type of activities in which journalism engaged. For example, gathering information, editing stories and publishing news and opinions. Then we use these features to provide a definition of journalism that separates it from novel writing, storytelling or editing um, information for a government database. Um, uh, 
And then we've got this final one, which is the uh, normative approach. According to the normative approach, writers should not be termed journalists unless they have highly developed skills, which are typically gained through training or formal education, and unless they adhere to the practical Particular, um, uh, to particular ethic norms, investigative abilities, reach skills, proficiency with media technologies, awareness of how institution, institutions work, and highly developed communication skills are among the qualities required to be a journalist. Um, the, uh, the ethical standards uh, include a commitment to accuracy, verification, and, and truth, and, um, um, and other uh, things that are part of journalism. Okay, this numerative approach is similarly funded on the idealist view of journalism as forming the public uh, truthfully and responsibly. So the best instance of journalism and the practices of the best um, journalists are used to define journalism. Stephen J. Uh, Ward explains um, that digital media ethics deals with the distinct ethical problems, practice, and norms of digital news media. Digital news media includes online journalism, blogging, digital photo, uh, photo journalism, citizen journalism, and social media. It includes questions about how professional journalism um, 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 should use this new media to research public stories as well as how to use text or images provided by citizens. It also touches on if texting the news is the new journalism because you can text the news without having to write a, um, a, a, write, write a report or write a, a, an article for an online uh, newspaper, but you can text the news to your audience instead directly on their cell phone. This new media resolution is transforming the nature of journalism and its ethics. This means to publish is now in the hands of citizens, while the internet encourages new forms of journalism that are interactive and immediate. Professional journalists share the journalistic sphere with tweeters, bloggers, um, uh, citizen journalists, and also social media um, users. And because as the old and the new uh, share the space, um, a central question is to the, the, the everybody's uh, everybody uh, um, the question on everybody's mind is to what extent um, existing media ethics is suitable for today's and tomorrow's news media that is immediate, interactive, and always on. Okay, this new mixed news media requires a new mixed media ethics guidelines that apply to amateur and professional professionals, whether they blog, tweet, broadcast, or write for newspapers. Media ethics needs to be rethought and reinvented for the media of today and not for um, yesterday. Um, and because there's a tension between traditional and online journalism, this media ethics need to be clear and this needs to be redefined or, um, and everybody needs to use those 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 to know those media ethics while they are practicing journalism. The culture, um, because there is a tension between journalism, traditional journalism, and online journalism, the culture of traditional journalism um, really really rubs up against the culture of online journalism. We know that the culture of traditional journalism with, uh, has values of accuracy, pre-publication, verification, balance, impartiality, and gatekeeping. And um, uh, online journalism with uh, emphasis on immediacy, transparency, sometimes partiality, non-professional journalists, and post-publication correction. You might ask, how do we integrate existing media ethics into new media? That's a, uh, which, which is a question on everybody's mind. Is the um, ethics of the integrated newsroom will be the best, as uh, researchers have uh, um, uh, advised. Um, a newsroom which practices both layered journalism. Um, and what is journalism, you may ask? Jo layered journalism brings together different forms of uh, journalism and different types of journalists to produce a multimedia offering of professional style news and analysis combined with citizen journalism and interactive chat. With uh, layered journalism, is then layered journalism is then divided into two um, 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 two categories, which is horizontal um, and vertical um, um, newsroom. Uh, this, uh, those two will have to deal with two main things. One has speed and one has depth. So the speed will then have um, uh, informing your audience via um, 
mobile, okay, um, and email, you would have drafts as uh, 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 draft um, articles for, let's say, for blogging. You also have articles that are then packaged to be published on, on broadcast, but on a much, much more faster pace. Then you've got in-depth, um, the in-depth uh, um, articles that has got more context. They are analyzed and they reflect what is on the ground. They will then be uh, used for both print, broadcast, blog, and podcast. And then you've got also interactivity, interactivity in some of those pieces. Those pieces would have forums, would have chats, would also have audience coming in with their own opinions. Um, and you can customize all this database in there so that you know who your audience is and um, you, can, um, you know how to increase engagement when it comes to that. Okay, with horizontal newsroom, um, the feature newsrooms will be, uh, be layered in terms of uh, the kinds of journalists it produces from print and uh, broadcast um, sections to online broad production, uh, production centers. Newsrooms in the past have had vertical and horizontal layers. Newspapers, uh, uh, newsrooms have ranged vertically from the editor in chief at the top to the um, reporter, to the curb reporter at the bottom. Horizontal, horizontally, large mainstream newspaper newsrooms have produced several types of journalism, for, both for print and broadcast. Um, however, future newsrooms will have additional and different layers. Um, some news sites will continue to be operated by a few dedicated people, only to one format, such as blogging, but a substantial portion of the new mainstream will consist of the, these complex um, and layered organizations. And then we've got the vertical newsroom. The vertical newsroom, there will be many layers of editorial positions. There will be citizens, journalists, and bloggers in the newsroom or closely associated with the newsroom. So many contributors will work from countries around the world. Some will write um, free, uh, some, will, some will write for free, some will be equivalent to um, paid freelancers, others will be regular um, commentators, like say uh, um, uh, sports experts who will then come in and talk to you on a, a topic that they're more familiar in or they have more knowledge in. In addition, there will be different types of editors. Some editors will work with uh, this new journalist, um, online citizen journalists and bloggers, while others editors, uh, while other editors will then deal with unsolicited images and text um, sent by citizens via email, websites, and Twitter. There will be editors or a community, they call them community producers, charged with going out to neighborhoods to help citizens um, use media to produce their own, um, their own stories. Um, an example of that would be an article written by former, um, let's say, uh, 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 let's say the, um, an example would be the Forbes magazine newsroom. Okay, the Forbes magazine newsroom um, currently, what they did at, at the moment is they've got a new kind of um, uh, secular process that links together data to editing, both words and talent, to production, to content, and ultimately the consumer and marketer. So what was the Forbes newsroom did, it started to um, oper uh, op uh, operationalize part of the new newsroom, particularly its feedback uh, component that enabled Forbes um, staffers and its expertise, um, topic-specific contributors to better understand audience behavior and consumption patterns. This new design allowed Forbes uh, staff editors, um, reporters and contributors, including those who focus mostly on the magazine, to use a continuous update dashboard that is tied to the additional content creation tools. And this dashboard supplies various data points to their individual posts and web activities. In other words, it begins to tell them how they are doing, where the audience is coming from, and how they might enter the conversation. So they are interactively talking to their audiences online, but also their audiences online are then also picking up on what they're putting on and also advising them on what sort of new um, things to add on. So they also included other developing elements on the, in, the, in the newsroom, such as analytics. They have a small team of people that monitor real-time activities on individual pages, as well as their own side as in order to increase user activity, engagement. Audience development is one of them. Members of this team also, will also use the information 
from the analytics team and elsewhere to help Forbes grow its audience, realizing there are uh, many information ecosystems on the web as well as other branded partners, sites that may have interest in Forbes content. Um, contributor support, increasingly they will provide staff reporters and contributors with additional self-publishing tools and media assets, for example, photo galleries, videos, etc., et to enhance their storytelling. Wertonair feels that the implementation, the implementation of layer journalism will encounter two types of, of, of problems. First, there will be a vertical ethical questions about how the different layers of the newsroom from professional editors to citizen freelance should interact to produce responsible journalism. For example, by what extent or what standards will professional editors evaluate the contributions of uh, citizen journalists? Second, there will be horizontal questions about the norms for the various newsroom sections. Um, However, before we get into this debate, and we will, I want us to uh, then look at um, um, things, uh, I want us to look at images of, ethics of images in, in addition to the digital divide. Finally, the new ethical uh, raised by the rise of new image technology. These images include both photographies and uh, video. Citizens and um, professional journalists um, have new and easy ways to capture and, let's say, transmit images such as cell phones linked to the internet via wireless technologies. The new technologies for altering and manipulating these images. This conversion of ease of capture ease of transmission and ease of manipulation uh, questions the traditional principles of photo photojournalism which we which were developed for non-digital capture and transmission of pictures and uh, and videos photojournalists often talk about how it is um, how it, how it is permitted to change the technical aspects of a picture such as in altering art, art, slightly the tone or color of a photo, which is it's okay, but they draw the line at any other further changes, changing the meaning or context of the image so as to mislead viewers is considered unethical. However, the line between a technical change and a change's meaning is not always clear. So an image maker can enhance the color of a, um, of a photo until it is quite unlike the original picture of the um, object or the event. Um, of the event. An example we'll look at is, the, um, is probably the O.J. Simpsons and his murder trial. In short, the, um, in, uh, in short, the former footballer um, star was charged with the murder of his ex-wife and her friend. On June 17, 19, uh, 1994, Simpson fled the, the police in what was the televised event for the generation, but was, uh, but was finally taken into custody. A week later, the LAPD released Simpson's mugshot would ran on both the Time and the news, um, Newsweek's cover on June 27. Also, editors um, may argue that it is permissible to alter images for the covers of fashion magazine in the other times um, and, and other covers of art or, or attract those those sorts of um, uh, magazine standards. But the 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 problem with O.J. Simpson's uh, um, Time magazine is just the 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 Time magazine image and the new book image uh, are completely different um, uh, here. Both, when you look at these images, the O.J. Simpson's um, cover for both the Times and New York Below um, um, have got, are edited. They are trouble. So the trouble was Times version was a bit darker, edited version, uh, courtesy of its own publisher, illustrator. And then many observed that by darkening Simpson's face um, on the Times had emphasized his skin color and gave him a more menacing appearance and fairer look. Instead of taking the original uh, image that feels um, that de depicts him as, as an everyday uh, person and not a really a convicted killer or somebody who can um, create, uh, commit a crime. Mm. Um, uh, the Times defended its decision firstly online on a computer bulletin, um, but then later on, as millions of people saw the image, they all complained about how dark the image is and how it portrays uh, people of color and um, why they wouldn't do the same thing to an ordinary um, uh, white American who would have committed the same crime. 
Um, so later, the, the new works, uh, the time makes indeed obviously change um, uh, that, that image and then put on a new, um, the original image, which later the New York Times, um, uh, the New York's issue um, also then gathered more um, uh, recognition for, for, for using the real image. Um, as mentioned above, um, as mentioned of, of, on, 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 on photo, photojournalism e, um, uh, issues, uh, ethics, one issue is whether newsrooms can trust uh, the easily obtained images of citizens and citizens journalists. Who is the reader? How do we know that this image is really of the event in, que in, in question? And we need to look at how, um, uh, um, uh, with the with the introduction of the AI and the ChatGPT, all those new applications that you can use to enhance your images, you really don't know what is new and what is. We really don't know what is real and what is old. So it's really we should we then um, create new applications that we can that can tell us or that can um, uh, determine if an image has been manipulated or not. Um, because sometimes it can tell because with the processing of some of these images, it's really hard to tell. Should we as journalists have to go out ourselves and perform traditional photojournalism as we did uh, before in the olden times or traditionally as we had kept journalism in taking these photos or should we allow or we just trust our audiences to take these photos for us and, and hope that these images are not um, altered in any way. Another issue is whether a journalist or assistant use technology to alter this photography and then to add an object to that photo or to take object out or images created by an AI application like today. AI is really taking quite a big step um, in, 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 in changing how things are done, um, not only in the newsroom, not only in terms of reporting for, let's say, other publications, but also online. You don't know what is, uh, what is, what is, um, what is true, you don't know what is false, because I can uh, put a picture of myself on a computer and make myself younger and not make myself older if I want to. Um, so those are some of the questions we need to think about. Can we allow journalists or the audience, our, jo our audience to send through images that we don't know where they're coming from? And how do we, how can we tell if these images have been altered by an AI application or not? Or should we all invent another application that would then tell us if images have been altered in any way? That's another question to ask when we talk about the digital divide in journalism and how to remain those ethics of journalism in the journalism industry. Thank you very much.